What's up guys and welcome to a new three-part series. By the end of this series you'll be able to spout out a plan section and 3D model, which is a really lame joke for a nozzle, but anyways, why don't we go ahead and power up our CAD tools with ultra high pressure and let's get to it. Because guess what? It's nozzle time. Here we go. All right, ladies and gents, here we go. Three parts. First part, nozzle plan. It's a top view. Second part, nozzle section, which is basically just cutting it down the center and seeing what it looks like, uh, kind of like an x-ray vision view. And then you have an isometric model or also called 3D model, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start part one with this nozzle plan. Um, looking at this nozzle plan, you can see that there are center lines with a bunch of circles at that center. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you first what it looks like. It's going to look like this. That's going to be the second part, and this is going to be the third part. I did not do the drill holes in here just yet. I was a little lazy. Now, by the way, here's a special shout out to Casey and Jody for being my newest members. Casey actually suggested this project for us, so thank you to Casey. If you're interested in having some extra perks on the channel, like project suggestions, shout outs, extra help, and even video collaborations, check out the link in my description to join Team Wizard. All right, so I'm gonna start a blank document here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to OS Enter to make sure that we have the same settings set up. Make sure Object Snap is turned on. Make sure midpoint is turned on. And then also the default ones are endpoint, center. I believe intersection is always turned on. And then I do extension and tangent. Okay. You don't need all of those for this drawing, but you definitely need midpoint. Okay. So hit okay on that. Next thing, make sure that F10, when you hit that at the very bottom in the command line, it says polar on. Uh, F12, I make sure that that is off. That one doesn't pop up in the command line. So the way you know if it's on or off, it's called dynamic input, is if you see the boxes floating around with your cursor, that means that dynamic input is turned on. If we hit F12, it turns it off. I generally teach and draw with dynamic input off, but there are pros and cons of having it on and off. Okay, so next part here, construction line. You can go behind the draw tab here, and it is this one with the two arrows. It's called a construction line, but you can also see at the bottom of that little menu that popped up that you can type X line as the command. Okay, so X L I N E. Uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna ask for a center. Okay, so always read down in the in the command line here and just see what it's asking. Specify a point. Okay, so we're gonna put a point here, and then it wants to know where you want to draw it. So we're gonna go straight up, and then we're gonna go to the right. Okay, and then hit escape to get out of that tool. This is going to be the center of all the goodness of circles. Okay, so going back to the plan, uh, we've got this green circle around the outside. By the way, these lines going up and down, if I didn't say it already, are center lines. They're showing the centers of the circles. All right, so there is a set of instructions here that I was given by Casey. I'm skipping this. Um, I'm, if you want, I'll leave it up on the screen here for a second, or you can pause your video and just read over that stuff if you want to do all the technical stuff. Uh, the only thing I really took away from this that you know I maybe don't normally do is the layer setup. So let me just set up one layer for you, and then I'll show you how that goes. All right. So in here, the zero layer is the default layer. So if I go to layer properties, you'll see. And by the way, layers are just similar to like if you've ever used Photoshop. It just means that certain things are on different layers. So an example being if you work in architecture, you would have different layers for like the doors, the windows, uh, structure, electrical, things like that. OK, so I can go here and I can hit new layer. I'll call that layer center lines. And you can toggle the light bulb to turn that layer on and off, which is not that important right now. Uh, you can change the color of it. Let's just say that they wanted the center lines to be red. You can choose that color. Uh, there are different line types. Okay, so if I go into load here, I can find the one that says either center, center two, or center X two. Uh, never done this project before, so I'm not exactly sure which scale I would use. I'd probably go with the 0.5 X one because that's always the one that we use. Hit OK uh, and select center two and hit OK. So now you can see that that is a center line two. So when I close this, and I change my layer to center lines, every line I draw will be a center line and it will be red. Okay, so very simple. If you guys wanna go back to that page and set up all your layers, it does make it easier uh, rather than drawing the whole thing all in the color white, it does get confusing if, there, if it is a very detailed drawing. So you can either do it that way or you can change to the different layers, maybe just set all of them up at first and then every time you're gonna draw a different line, choose that layer and then draw that line. Um, that's up to you. Okay. I'm going to skip that whole part. 
I don't think it's very valuable for the video. I already showed you how to do one layer, so we should be good. All right, so I'm looking at this green outside circle here, and it's labeled twice, okay? These are called leaders, or you can just call them arrows. It's up to you. Uh, number 11 is just saying that if you go back to this little uh, diagram or whatever information here, you've got number 11 is the A plate outer, which is just green, okay? So if you set up your layers, you can change to that layer now and then draw this circle, or you can be like me and be lazy, okay? So going to my plan, the other one is saying that it's a two and a half inch diameter, all right? So going here, bunch of different ways to do this. C, enter is circle. Uh, you could go up to this circle here and click that, or you could go to center diameter. And the only problem I have with this tool is that when I am drawing and doing 2.5 for my diameter, let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, the problem is, is that when I go to hit spacebar, okay, and by the way, spacebar and enter do the same thing when you are not in any tools, it brings you back into the last tool that you were in. So a lot of times when you're trying to be fast and productive, um, you want to get back into tools as fast as possible. Okay. So I hit spacebar brings me back in a circle. The only problem is, is that it doesn't bring you back into the diameter circle. It brings you back into the radius circle. So you'll see if I click over here again, I do 2.5. It's going to be double the size of that because it didn't pick up on the fact that you were doing a diameter circle. It only picked up on the radius. Okay. So I kind of don't like that tool. I usually use center radius or I'll do, um, C enter and then do the center point and then do diameter and then do your 2.5. Okay. So we've got this circle, we're zoomed in a little bit here, and we're going back to the plan. Uh, next circle in, you guys can do the whole layer thing. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Going down here, one and three eighths uh, diameter. Okay, so we're going to circle, center, diameter, one, and this is how you type in the software if you're doing a mixed number, minus sign, three over eight. Every time you say the word and, that's going to be the minus sign, one and three over eight. Okay, and you hit enter. That's the next one. Going back to the plan, we've got a 1 and 1 16th and 11 16th, okay? So, same thing. Make sure you hit diameter. 1 and 1 16th. I'm going to hit space bar. That brings me back into the radius circle. Click at the center. Diameter again. 11 16th. Uh, what else we got here? We got this one in here, which is 3 8 and 1 4th, Okay. All right, so spacebar brings me back in the circle, center, diameter, three eighths, spacebar, center, diameter, one fourth. That is all the circles uh, that are in the center here. Now we need to figure out where these drill holes are, okay? And honestly, we're almost done with this first part here. Now you're probably looking at these dimensions up here and you're just wondering like what these are showing. Um, if you go obviously down on the sides, you can see that it's showing the width of the big circle, which is a two and a half inch diameter. The next one in is a one and three eighths. The next one is 11 16 So it's just giving you another way of seeing the dimensions for this top view. And now in this next part here, we want to draw these four red circles. Okay. Those are going to be drill holes in this object, in this nozzle. They don't tell you what the diameter, uh, or radius of that circle or those circles are. Um, and they don't tell you how far in they are, but if you look at the section here, you're looking at one eighth inches, the start of the outside circle, and then the circle itself is a diameter of one fourth. Okay. So keep one fourth diameter in the back of your mind for a second. Uh, one eighth in is going to get you to the outside of the circle, but we want to know where the center of the circle is. So if I go one eighth plus another eighth, which is one quarter, that's going to go through the center of the circles. So rather than using the circle tool on this one, you could use the offset tool, okay? The way the offset tool works is if you're like a polyline or something and you offset that by one enter, which would be one inch, I can click this and either go that way or that way. Uh, you'll see that one side makes it bigger, one side makes it smaller. If it's a line and you offset it, it's just going to offset that line by one inch, like so, one, one. And if it's a circle, of course, when we offset, if the diameter of the biggest circle is 2.5 and we want to make that circle one fourth inch in from there, then our distance would be one fourth. We would click the outside circle and then we would go in from that point and not out. Okay. Now this circle is probably one that I would change the color of because it's not a circle that you want in there later. It is just what I call a reference line. So it gives you the center, and this is where we're doing the diameter, you can use any tool you want, of one-fourth, 
And then rather than doing that four times, I'm just going to select this circle, go to copy. It's going to say, what is the base point? Where do you want to grab it from? I'm going to grab it from the center and I'm just going to go bing, bing, bing. So at that point, you would erase the red circle and guess what? Your top plan is done. Now do me a favor, guys. If you learned something, if you enjoyed the video, especially if you're still watching right now, like and subscribe to see more in-depth content. And why not go a step further and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And now guys, as you know, there are many ways to draw the same thing in this software. So I'd really like to hear in the comments what you would do differently and what might be faster for everyone else watching. Let's all help each other. You're still here? Go check out part two. Later.